Hey everybody, I'm Kevin with Rhino Off Road. Welcome to the channel. I'm a full time pilot and a part time adventurer and overlander who spends my weekends exploring the High Sierra in my Jeep Wrangler. One of the questions that I most frequently get asked on my channel is how I stay warm when I'm camping way up in the Sierra at single digit Fahrenheit temperatures. Well, the answer to that is this the Mr. Heater Buddy. For those of you that are not familiar, the Mr. Heater Buddy is essentially a propane heater. It has a bunch of safety mechanisms on it a carbon monoxide detector, uh, a low oxygen detector and those kind of things. But is this actually safe? Well, that's the second question that I most frequently get. And then the third question is, okay, assuming this is safe, do you get a lot of condensation in your tent? So we're gonna address all three of these things in today's video. I'm gonna basically plug the Mr. Heater Buddy into a five pound propane tank and I'm gonna run it all night long. Now I'm gonna run it like I normally do on low because in the confines of my iCamp or SkyCamp, high is just too much heat. For this small space, it's just not needed. So I'm gonna run it on low However, what I'm going to do differently uh, than what I normally do when I'm camping is I'm going to close up all the zippers. So we'll be in the eye camper here, totally enclosed, uh, no ventilation at all. Now I'm going to use a couple of sensors here. So this one detects carbon dioxide as well as oxygen concentration of the air. This one does carbon dioxide as well, but also does humidity and temperature. It's basically set up an experiment where I can run a time lapse. We'll run it for again for 12 hours. I'm gonna take one photo every minute and we'll basically see what the highest carbon monoxide and lowest oxygen concentrations uh, that we get. And then we'll compare that to uh, what is considered safe. Now, because no good video starts without a disclaimer, remember that I am just a uh, individual testing this under a specific set of variables and circumstances in my own tent. Whether this is safe or not, is totally up to you to figure out given your specific setup. Uh, that said, let's get started with the experiment. Right now it's indicating zero parts per million, same as this one, and then O2 is at 20.9% uh, volume. Here we go. All right, good morning everyone and welcome back. I just climbed up into the eye camper and shut off the Mr. Heater Buddy. Uh, we had a 12 hour time lapse running and I took one photo every single minute. So I uh, looked through the footage real quick and the results were pretty interesting. Starting off for carbon monoxide. So looking it up on the EPA website, it says that the current OSHA or the Occupational Safety and Health Administration permissible exposure limit uh, is 50 parts per million. While the orange detector saw a peak of 29 parts per million and the white one saw a peak of 22 parts per million. So about half of what OSHA says is permissible exposure. Now, when it came to oxygen concentration, which is again, the big other concern with a propane heater in a enclosed space like this, nominally the atmosphere is about 21% oxygen and the rest of nitrogen and other gases. Well, the minimum that we saw was 19.8%. Uh, percent oxygen concentration level. Going back to the EPA website, it says EPA considers any atmosphere with an oxygen level below 19.5% to be oxygen deficient. Thus, again, we were above what OSHA considers to be an oxygen deficient environment. Now, a couple interesting points though to think about is as we started the time lapse, you saw both the carbon monoxide increase and the oxygen concentration rapidly decrease for a period of time, about one hour, at which point both began to essentially reverse their trend where uh, the average part per million ended up being between 15 and 20 for the entire night and the oxygen concentration rose pretty much back up to what the normal environment is at 20.9%. And again, it's interesting is the tent was fully enclosed. There's no additional wind, uh, no vents were open, anything like that. So it's like the, the environment first had an overcorrection and then went back to normal. Now also interesting to look at is that of temperature and relative humidity. So starting out at about 10 p.m., the, the temperature outside was 50 degrees, and it quickly rose once I started the experiment between 80 to this morning, closer to 100 degrees. Now I realize it's a little skewed because the temperature sensor on the gauge was right next to the Mr. Heater Buddy, and normally I'll put the Heater Buddy uh, in kind of the far corner of the tent. But either way, even 80 degrees is way too hot to sleep in, reinforcing why I choose to vent my tent 
even in the middle of winter and even when it's snowing. Uh, otherwise, even on low setting, it's just too hot. But what's more interesting is actually relative humidity because I get asked a lot about condensation inside my tent. When we started the experiment, the relative humidity was around 50% and then dropped down to 20% uh, maintained that all throughout the night. So obviously the Mr. Heater Buddy was effectively drying out the air. Well, as long as relative humidity doesn't approach uh, the upper end of closer to 100%, we shouldn't see condensation. And when I got in the tent this morning, I had zero water anywhere on my tent. Now, mind you, I have a carpeted floor, which definitely can help with that, but I did not feel any moisture anywhere around the tent. I didn't sleep in the tent last night, so obviously when you're sleeping in here and you are exhaling, there's moisture that's being added to the air. But either way, again, I hopped in the tent this morning and it's perfectly dry. All right, now wrapping this up, is this about what I expected? Yeah, uh, I've done a lot of research on this and there's tons of videos out there where people have kind of conducted the same or similar experiments. Is this gonna change how I sleep with the Mr. Heater Buddy? Well, no. Especially with my kids, uh, I would love to hit the I believe button and say that this thing is totally safe, but obviously it's just not worth the risk. So how do I actually use the heater buddy? Well, I will use it to fully heat the tent uh, before I get in it at night. I will leave it running while we're getting comfortable when in bed, and then the last thing I do before I fall asleep is turn it off. I'll leave it off throughout the night until morning, when the first thing I do when I wake up is turn it back on and start preheating the tent. According to Mr. Heater Buddy, this unit is safe to use in a confined space. Really what I wanted to do here is at least give you guys the data uh, so that you can make the decision for yourself. But no matter what, I do recommend if you are going to use your portable heater, you have to vent it. Open up the top vent a little bit because a lot of that heat can escape up anyways. Uh, and then you can crack the side panels as well. And this will allow fresh vent ventilation to continually enter the tent. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Again, a little bit different of a video format and a little shorter, but I just wanted to make it short and sweet, give you the data, and hopefully this helps you for your winter camping needs. I'm Kevin with Rhino Off-Road, and we will see you next time.